Welcome to this week's edition of the St. Paul Podcast. I'm Katie Warren, one of the pastors here at St. Paul Lutheran Church, located in the heart of Davenport, Iowa. Right here, each week, you can hear a message to inspire your walk with God and hear beautiful music to fill your life. Let this podcast be your occasion to contemplate some of the deepest things in life, just as I hope it helps faith come alive for you. Welcome once again to this worship podcast. Uh, In just a minute, I'm going to read for you a selection from Mark's Gospel. And it's sort of a funny section in that when you first hear it, you might be inclined to think, okay, so what's the big deal? Why is this important? Why are we hearing it today? In some ways, this particular reading just sounds more like a description of day-to-day life for Jesus and the disciples. They're coming and going and talking amongst each other and making plans. There's no huge action or movement or some great event that we're watching unfold or trying to process and think about. We hear about how the group went here and then they went there and then just kept doing the work that they had been doing. But here's what I really want you to tune into as you listen. When do you hear the word compassion? Consider the circumstances what's happening, or why might scripture so clearly spell this out here? The reality is, compassion is one of those words we might use somewhat regularly, but we don't always stop to consider what it really means, how it connects to our own words or actions or faith, for that matter. So today, we'll spend a little bit of time thinking together about what it means to live with compassion how our faith is shaped and changed by God's example of compassion toward others. More on that in just a moment. First, let's take a listen to Mark chapter 6, beginning with verse 30. The disciples gathered around Jesus and told them all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, 
come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while, for many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. Okay, first, if you didn't catch the word compassion, be sure to rewind, listen again, so you can get a sense of the context. Otherwise, let's turn to a reflection now on this story, this passage, what we learn from Jesus and the disciples, and how they choose to respond to the, their unplanned circumstances. Take a listen. Well, at our house right now, One of our favorite books we often read at bedtime is a classic, The Little Engine That Could. I could probably recite it for you from memory. I've read it so many times. I won't do that to you this morning. I'm guessing you may have some vague recollection or connection to the book yourself, but I'll jog your memory. Here's a brief synopsis of the book. There's a happy little train chugging her way through the mountains filled with all sorts of good things toys and dolls, books, fresh fruit, lollipops, all to be delivered to the good girls and boys on the other side of the mountain. When all of a sudden the train comes to a sudden stop and the poor engine is too tired to keep going, she is exhausted, can't move another inch. So the toys and dolls decide that they'll just flag down another train to help them, and one by one they see a shiny passenger train and a freight engine and later an old steam engine. They all pass by. They all say they can't help. Just as the toys are about to give up hope, this little blue engine comes along and she thinks she's probably too small to help. She's never pulled a train over the mountain before, but she tugs and pulls and repeats that great line over and over again. I think I can. I think I can. And sure enough, the little blue engine gets all the dolls and toys and food over to the other side of the mountain to reach the good little girls and boys. It's a great story. If you want to hear the whole thing with all the details, uh, come over to our house at 7 o'clock tonight. (laughs) You can hear us read the book yet again. Like many good kids' books, there's some lessons to be learned here, of course, about persistence believing in yourself, the power of trying with those words, I think I can, I think I can. But as we were reading this book just a couple of days ago, it occurred to me that there's kind of another layer to this story that at least was lost on me in the first 100 readings or so of this book. And it's the lesson that this story tells us about the power of compassion. Here is this little engine that is exhausted, those toys and dolls that by no fault of their own are left in need of help. Every engine that passes by has their reason for why they can't stop. They're too busy or too tired or not interested or have other places they have to be. And then there's this little blue engine. As the story goes, she sees the tears in the doll's eyes and she decides doing nothing just isn't really an option. Maybe her words, I think I can, aren't just in reference to her physical abilities to pull this train, but are also in reference to her willingness to try to do something, anything she can to help. A children's book, of course, doesn't use this big of a word, but what they're describing is compassion. It's the ability to see the need of another and to care for them, to love them, to show them that they're not alone, no matter what the circumstances might be. 
And of course, there's a very similar thing that unfolds in this gospel reading we just heard a moment ago, where the disciples, they have been hard at work. They are very clearly tired and worn out. It says they're so busy, they haven't even had time to eat. So Jesus says to them, let's take a break. Let's get away for a little bit. A funny thing happens on their way to this deserted place where they're headed. It turns out they're not all by themselves. All sorts of people saw where their boat was coming and they ran around the shore after them. I can kind of picture it, if you will. Their boat comes ashore. They've got their sunglasses on. Jesus has his beach chair and a good book in hand. The disciples have their out-of-office reply set up for their email, just ready to get this vacation going when they look up and they see dozens, maybe hundreds of people staring right back at them. How does Jesus respond anyway? There's that word again, compassion. Scripture just spells it out. It literally says Jesus had compassion for them, began to teach them and heal their ailments, listening to their stories. Jesus and the disciples of all people, they had plenty of reasons to hop back in the boat and head for a different shore and say, no, thank you, not right now, I'm not interested. But whatever they were thinking, or however they might have been hoping things were going to play out a little bit differently, still, they were filled with compassion. This ability to care deeply for another, tend to someone else's needs, or to take time away from your own agenda to fit into someone else's plans. It's rarely convenient, really, but it's almost always sacred, needed work. I actually had a whole different sermon planned where I was going to talk about the importance of rest, the need to get away, vacation, the very fact that the scripture would have Jesus tell the disciples, by extension, all of us, to catch our breath, to get away, all of which is very much important. There's a whole commandment that focus is just on this, this idea of Sabbath, time for renewing our mind and body and spirit, for rest. And at the same time, neither Jesus nor the disciples actually end up getting the rest that they're wanting at all, at least not in this scripture that we hear this morning. Instead, what we find is this willingness on their part to shift their priorities, to see things from a different perspective, to care for whoever is right in front of them. I've heard it described before that a person's true character is defined by who we are when no one is watching. And along that same vein, I'm more and more convinced that a person's capacity for compassion is how we respond when we have nothing to gain, when it might even be an inconvenience for us or disrupt our own plans. These kind of opportunities, they present themselves all the time if you kind of start to look for them. As one example, uh, on Friday, a couple days ago, I saw the news just like you probably did about flights being canceled all over the world because of this computer glitch issue creating total chaos for airlines. Also this weekend, as I mentioned in an announcements, Uh, We had some 16,000 kids and adults at this youth gathering in New Orleans, many of whom flew there and were scheduled to fly back on Friday or Saturday. I'm part of this Facebook group of pastors and youth directors, and uh, over the last 48 hours or so, I've seen all sorts of people posting all sorts of attempts to try to help those who are stuck saying things like, if anyone needs a ride north, we've got 10 spots on our bus. We can make it work. How can we help? Or if you need a place to stay, we'll open up our church. Here's where we're located. One person said, I can't do anything to help with the airlines, but I'm bringing cookies to the airport. I'll meet you there. (laughs) Whatever you could do. For myself, I think about the times I've been on the receiving end of a canceled flight or a missed connection before I approach the desk to figure out what my next plans are, I always take a moment to remind myself to be kind to the ticket agent, the person who's standing there. It's not their fault that there was fog or a worldwide computer failure. We get to choose our element of 
compassion for those who otherwise bear the brunt of harsh words, hard work, unplanned activities. To put it another way, Dutch writer and priest by the name of Henry Nouwen, he once shared this little story about when he first arrived in the United States to teach theology at Notre Dame. He was surprised at the American professors that they kept their office doors open so often. And so he asked one of his colleagues, aren't you constantly interrupted? How do you ever get any work done with your door open? When his colleague responded, Henry, your interruptions are your work. I can kind of imagine Jesus in this moment saying something very similar to the disciples who might have been a little disheartened to see this crowd in front of them. As they realize their beach vacation is not to be. Your interruptions are your work. Whenever someone shows up in front of you, wherever there is need, something you can do to address it, what God asks of us is simply to have compassion. It's no small thing, actually, to go out of your way, to take time out of your valuable plans, to set aside your own needs, even momentarily, and to honor the humanity of another person in front of you. And to be fair, there's plenty of times, all of us, for whatever reason, our initial response may not necessarily be compassionate. We are human, after all. Thankfully, we get to remember that we have this God of ours who sees us, who hears us. Sometimes we are the ones who are in need of that love and care. We are the ones who are following Jesus around, trying to bend God's ear just a bit. So we get to give thanks today for a God whose instinct always seems to be compassion. And we'll work to follow the lead of that little blue engine, more importantly, those disciples, all of whom seem quick to say, I think I can. That wherever we find ourselves, whoever we're with, whatever we may be occupied with, may we see those interruptions as, in fact, our sacred work. Amen.
We'll turn now to God in prayer. Let's pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Whatever you may find yourself doing in the coming days, whoever you're with, whatever you think your plans might be, may ye remember that your interruptions are your sacred work. And may you be blessed and inspired by the compassion of our God. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Thank you for your support of the ministries of St. Paul Lutheran Church. Our commitment to endeavors that lend hope to other people stretches across the country and around the world. We hope that in a good way, you feel a great part of that reach. So tune in next Thursday for another edition of St. Paul Podcasts.